In this problem, we have these two 120 Newton forces that are pointing in opposite directions. All of these numbers that you see are the locations of points A, B, and C. It's how we can figure out where those points are in space. All of these lengths will be in meters. And the other thing I want to clarify is this dotted line. This dotted line shows where this 120 Newton force right here is pointing, what it's pointing along. And it shows that it will intercept at point C uh, at the wherever point C is. So now we know the problem set up. Let's look at the equations we can use to figure out a couple. So the equations we have is our moment is equal to a force times a distance, and this is my scalar equation. The other equation I have is a vector equation where my moment is equal to R cross F. And these are the two equations that we could use. So this is my vector equation, but which one should we use? Well, it really depends on the setup of the problem. This particular problem is in 3D, so I, always go with a vector equation. The reason is a scalar equation has this D term right here. And what this D term is, is it is looking for the distance between the perpendicular distance between your two vectors. In 3D space, if you can, if you know that distance, it's fine, but it's usually very, very difficult to figure out what the actual perpendicular distance is because these vectors are in three dimensions now. And sometimes it's extremely complicated to try to figure out that distance. So in 3D, I always suggest to use the vector approach. When you're working with a 2D problem, I normally try at least at first to work with this scalar equation. But if I run into problems, I still will go to the vector equation. So what is this vector equation? Well, if I have two points or two forces, and if this is some force that's a minus F and this is a force that's an F, and these are my vectors, this R right here is going to point from some vector along the line of action at any point on this vector. So we could just say at this point right here to any point along this vector right here. So it doesn't matter the point. It just needs to be along the line of action of this force. So we can say this is my R vector. In the way that this vec this r vector points is i'm taking a moment about this point right here so this force is just going to go away because it goes through the point i'm taking the moment about and this is the force that will be used in this equation so now that we know the equations that i'm going to use let's figure out on this problem where my r vector is now I'm going to say I want to use this 120 Newton force vector because I'm going to have some more information about its its orientation. So I want my R vector, if we look at this over here, I want my R vector to point from point B to point A. And this right here is going to be R. Now let's figure out where in space this uh, a and B are. So A is, well, I need to go in the X direction. I need to go back three. So A is going to be minus three. Then in the Y direction, I need to go, oops, the Y direction, I need to go six, four plus two. And in the Z direction, I need to go up three. So this is the location, this is where point A is located. Point B is located at, in the X direction, I need to go two. In the Y direction, I need to go minus two. In the Z direction, I need to go three. Now let's just figure out where point C is right now, just for completeness in the X direction, I need to go three. In the y direction, I need to go four. And in the z direction, I need to go zero. So I'm going to figure out this r vector, my position vector, 
that goes from A to, that points from B to A. And this is gonna be my position of A minus my position of B. The head of the vector minus the tail of the vector. So this is gonna be minus three minus two I plus six minus a minus two J plus three minus three K. So I can simplify that and that's gonna be minus five I. This is gonna be plus eight J plus zero K. So this is important and this is my R vector right here. So I need to remember that. Now that I have my R vector, I want to find my F vector right here. And I said, I want to use this 120 Newton force because I'm going to be able to figure out what direction it's pointing because I know it is going to intercept point C. Now to figure out what direction it's pointing, I have a force and I can figure out a force along a line. The force along a line is given by the equation F is equal to the magnitude times that position vector, I'll call this RAC, over the magnitude of RAC. So let's figure out this part first, RAC and the magnitude of RAC. So RAC is going to be, well, it's going to be this way. So it's going to be point C minus point A. And this is going to be three minus a minus three. And that's an I. Then we're going to have four minus six J. And then we're going to have zero minus three K. Oops plus uh, zero minus three K. And we can simplify that. We can say this is going to be six I plus minus two J. I'll get rid of the parentheses, just minus two J minus three K. So what's the magnitude of RAC? The magnitude of RAC is gonna be equal to the square root of six squared plus a minus two squared plus a minus three squared. So this will be 36, 40, 49. This is going to be the square root of 49. So that's going to be seven. All right, so now I know most of these pieces of information. This right here will be 120. That's given in the problem. So I can put this in my calculator. Well, let me write the equation out first. Um, this is going to be F is going to be equal to 120 times 6I minus 2J minus 3K divided by 7. So now I can just, what I can do is just multiply all of these terms and get my IJ in K components of my force. So let me bring up my calculator. So I'll have six divided by seven times 120. I'll have minus two divided by seven times 120. And I'll have minus three divided by seven times 120. And those are all the components of my force. So this is gonna be equal to 102 point nine I minus 34.3 J minus 51.4 K. So I also need this. So now I have my force. Let's take the cross product. So from this, I need to take a cross product to figure out what this moment is. And my cross product is going to look like this. This is going to be equal to first row is going to be I, it's going to be J, 
it's going to be k. The second row is going to be where my r my vector is. The third row is going to be where my f vector is. So r vector is going to be minus 5. 8 and 0 comes from right here. My f vector is going to be 102.9. It's going to be minus 34.3 and minus 51. Point four. So now there's a couple of ways of actually taking this cross product. The way I do it is first, I am going to cross out the first column and the first row, just like this. And I'm going to then take the determinant of the remaining elements that I have. So it's a two by two. And what I'm going to have is eight times 51.4. And then I'm going to subtract it from 0 times minus 31.4. And that's going to be my i component. So 8 times minus 51.4 minus 0 times minus 34.3. This is going to be i. I'll, I'll, go I'll just write it down, but it's we're just getting our vectors. So now we need to put in a minus sign. And now we're going to do the same thing with J. We're going to cross out these two rows. And then we're going to have 5 times minus 51.4 minus 0 times 102.9, the two places, the two elements we have left. So this is going to be minus 5 times minus 51.4 minus zero times 102.9. And this is my J term. The most important thing is to remember that this entire term, it has the negative sign in front of it. So finally, we'll cross out the last column and the first row. And we have a two by two right here. So we're gonna have minus five times minus 34.3 minus 8 times 102.9. So this is going to be a plus minus 5 times minus 34.3 minus 8 times 102.9. And that's a k component. So let's perform those multiplications. So we're going to have 8 times 51.4 this is going to be equal to, so my moment is going to be, going to be equal to 411.2i. We don't need to do these two terms because they're multiplied by zero, so they just go away. So I'm just saving some calculations. Uh, then we're going to have minus five times minus 51.4 times the minus one, because it's multiplied by this minus sign. So we get this is equal to minus 257j. And then finally, we have minus 5 times minus 34.3 minus, well, let's do it like this, minus 8 times 102.9. And we get that this is equal to minus 651.7, and that's a k component. So the units of this are going to be we're in meters, we're in Newton. So this is a Newton meter. So hopefully this video has helped you figure out and learn how to determine a couple moment of a 3D system that you may have.